Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we gather for uh, virtual worship once again, it is a, a pleasure to, to know all of you are out there, and we're grateful that you are tuning in to, to watch this video. We do hope that you will take time to share this with others, that we might uh, reach out as far and wide as possible with the message of Jesus Christ. Today, just a couple of quick concerns. Uh, we do ask for all of your newsletter articles to be sent into the church as soon as possible. Uh, we do ask that you would look over the birthdays and anniversaries and take a moment to drop a note to, to those who are having those and, and continue to connect with one another. Call and check on uh, those that you know from Sunday school or from church. Allow that we stay connected throughout this time of distancing. The uh, yard sale continues to be postponed with no foreseeable date in the future. We are asking that you do hold um, all your donations. Uh, we will not be accepting any of those until we have a firm date. I want to let you know that Vacation Bible School has been rescheduled for August the 10th through the 14th, and we're hoping to get more information out about that as we are, are still in the stages of planning. Reminder about the fundraising event for Rise Against Hunger, which will be May 27th. We will be sending out uh, flyers for everyone so that you can take those in with you and we will get full credit for that. Please, please, please don't forget to send your offering, your, your financial commitments to the, to the church. Uh, we still do need those. We are still operating. We're still trying to do whatever we can uh, within our community. So we still need those offerings. Uh, you can continue to drop them off outside the church or send them to PO Box 26, New Kingstown, PA. 17072. Uh, we are continuing to run on a limited basis with the office. We'll um, only be open probably about two days a week from now on, but we do ask that you will uh, pay attention to that and, and call before coming in. Uh, the upcoming Fifth Sunday Mission Offering uh, has uh, been slated to go to Mission on the Mountain, and while the Mission on the Mountain has been canceled for this year, uh, we are going to continue to give them our support as there will be many of operating expenses uh, throughout the, the coming year as preparing even for next year. So we have decided to go ahead and make sure that we are going to continue to support them uh, as they've been able to help us out in many ways. And now we come and we prepare our hearts for worship during the playing of the prelude. <laughs>
Good morning. Please hear our call to worship. Brothers and sisters in Christ, bring your hearts and lives before the Almighty that we might give glory to God this day. Let us come to time of worship and praise that our hearts and minds will be filled with his grace. Join me as I pray the prayer of invocation. We come today united not by blood, race, or nationality, but by love, a love that places you and we above I and me, a love so great it must originate from the source of all love. We, your people, O oh God, come seeking your love, a love more powerful than all our hurts, all our pain, a love that meets us where we are and calls to us to more than we can imagine, a love that can change our lives forever. Amen. Please join me in the opening hymn, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. <laughs> Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. This morning's first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21 from the Common English Bible. We continue the farewell discourse as Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. Please join me for the morning prayer. Gracious God, as we gather together this day, we come and give you thanks for safety and for your abiding presence with us. We gather, O oh Lord, and we come and offer to you our hearts. But we come, O oh Lord, with hearts that are broken for those who are sick, for those that are ill, for those that are continuing to struggle to to stem the tide of the coronavirus. We come and pray, O oh Lord, for our, our country, for our leaders, for our doctors and nurses and all those frontline workers, for so, so many who continue to, to sacrifice to keep life moving. We come, O oh Lord, and we pray especially for our country in the midst of, of times of unrest. We pray, O oh Lord, for for social justice. We pray for those who are in the midst of grieving because of injustice. We pray that we might be better than this, Lord, and that you would guide us to, to find ways to, to love one another, to care for one another, to show one another your love. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in our midst who are, are sick and ill, for those who are lonely and afraid, we ask your, your blessings and your presence with us. Allow your Holy Spirit to descend and, and fill our hearts to restore our trust in you, that we might continue to reach out in love and opportunities to, to reach out with, with grace to those around us, that we might be known as your disciples who walk in the way that you walked. And so we come now and are bold to pray as you taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For in thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
prayer as we pray our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the faithfulness of the members of this congregation, that we might continue to, to be a blessing to others through the gifts that have been given. Bless those gifts, O Lord, and bless the givers, that we might continue to, to walk amongst this community as your disciples, showing an outpouring of your love as we continue to, to meet the needs around us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. This morning, our second scripture lesson comes to us from the letter of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ and the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respect humility. Maintaining the good conscience, act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if it could be possible be God's will, than for doing evil. Christ himself suffered on account of sins once for all, the righteous one on behalf of the unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it is by the Spirit that he went to preach to us, to the spirits in prison. In the past, these spirits were disobedient when God patiently waited during the time of Noah. Noah built an ark by which a few, that is, eight, lives were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves you now, not because it removes dirt from your body, because it is the mark of a good conscience toward God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at God's right side, now that he has gone into heaven, he rules over all angels, authorities, and powers. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, as I read through the scriptures, I was struck by verse 17 in this particular set of scriptures. The idea of doing good. Now, it's probably because in a number of things that I've read recently, I've been looking at Wesley's three general rules. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement, and he formed these rules to, to guide the as founding principles of his societies, of the groups that he was asking to, to meet. He asked them to live by these, and, and they're pretty simple. Do no harm, do good, stay in love with God. Sounds pretty simple, right? But for me, these guiding prim principles guide my deliberations about how to shepherd through this time. Just as in Wesley's time, they can help us find our way by, by keeping us focused on our mission, how we're going to live out our life together even as we're separated and socially distant. How do we live out what Christ has called us to do? So let us take a, a moment to look at these three rules and, and how they can show us and, and dissect them for this moment in the pandemic. First, do no harm. One of the questions is how are we able to keep people safe? By foregoing our desire to meet together in person, we're preventing others from being harmed. That's why we're simply wearing the mask that we have. I have mine in my pocket and I wear it when I'm not preaching so that you can hear me clearly. We do that, we wear them to keep others safe, not just ourselves. It's not about us, it's about others. Second rule, do good. How can we be a role model for others? What are we doing to, to promote good and the welfare within our communities? Where are we meeting the real needs that exist in our communities? Are we reaching out to make sure that everyone has enough food? Are we watching over those who are sick and elderly to make sure that they don't have to be exposed to, to the things they don't need to be exposed to? And the third rule. Third rule is stay in love with God. We really do need to discuss this rule, do we? We don't need to do anything other than to know that we need to read the, the word of God like we should. To spend time in God's word where we find hope and comfort and strength in these times of need. We need to remember to take time each day to pray to give thanks and 
and to ask God for the things that we need. We should live our lives to be the holiest we can be so that we can walk in the example of Jesus Christ, our Lord. John Wesley was a mighty man of God, a man after God's own heart, and he was faithful to these rules. So why is it so many of us might find ourselves falling short? Maybe it's because we need to follow the footsteps of John Wesley and to walk like him as he walked like Christ. Today's lectionary passage offers a lot for us to consider. It is a call by Peter for us to stand firm and do good in the face of opposition. We should always be prepared to give a defense of the Christian faith to talk about why we have hope and why we live the way we live. It is a proclamation of the redemptive power of Jesus Christ as it relates to the fact that Christ has offered forgiveness to everyone, even to those who had died before Christ was here, because it says he went and proclaimed Christ's salvation to earlier generations who ended up in the prison of judgment because they wouldn't believe in him. Jesus tells of God's deep desire to redeem God's people throughout history. God has wanted to redeem people from the very beginning of time. The author tells about the the account of Noah and how through Noah, humanity was saved even though there was the great flood. We come and we hear about the redemptive work of God. And it's appropriate that in this time of resurrection after Easter, that we continue to celebrate that that resurrection of Jesus Christ through which we are offered new life as believers in Jesus Christ. And we're invited to, to come and participate in the body of Christ together with other believers. But if we choose to, to claim the name of Christian, it means that we have to come and ask ourselves certain questions. What is demanded of our community of faith in order to do good in this time? We can follow Wesley's charge to do no harm by by staying home and staying safe. But what are we required to do in order to be found to be good? How do we bear witness to God's redemptive love in the midst of the coronavirus? How do we bear witness to God's amazing grace? I would say that we can simply do what is in the best interest of others. It begins with social distancing, wearing a mask. Believe it or not, wearing that mask is a simple sign of Christ's love. By doing our part in in doing good and wearing that mask, we bear a witness to, to what we believe. It's not a sign of a lack of faith. It's a sign of of loving others as Christ taught us to do. Instead of acting selfishly and thinking only of ourselves and our inconvenience, we can show the love of Christ in the world. Think about the the interactions you have with, with those when you have to venture out to get food or medicine. Have you talked and thanked the people that are there helping us to continue to to know our lives. As I thought about this idea of of others over self, I was reminded back to when I was a a small child. Someone in my church taught me the acronym J-O-Y, which stands for Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Following Christ, brothers and sisters, is not about you. Jesus always put himself before others, or always put others before himself. And believe it or not, so should we. We should be like Christ. Christ himself suffered on the account of sins, all of our sins, once on the cross, that all sins could be forgiven for those who would believe. The righteous one on behalf of all of us unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God, that we could be atoned with God, forgiven, freed, freed to live a joyful life in Jesus Christ and to share his love with others. That's what Christ did. He suffered death because of our sin in order to bring us back to God. 
We're not asking people to die. We're asking people to put others ahead of themselves. And when asked why, to give a defense of our faith, that in all things we want to put others in front of ourselves because of God's grace. So what are the new practices, even in the throes of social distancing, that we can do to build connections and relationships with others that will keep us doing good and keep us in love with God? We put others first. And we keep God at the center of our lives. And we're practicing what God wants us to do. There's some amazing things that are going on all around us right now to build those new relationships. If you haven't read your newsletter, I invite you to do so. The porch ministry that came out of a staff parish meeting is a prime example, a way of people within the church making sure that we're caring for everyone within the life of our congregation. People reaching out to neighbors to make sure that, just checking on them, making sure they're okay, seeing if they have any needs maintaining that social distance, but still connecting. Praying for for those who are fighting the coronavirus. Praying for those who are working on the front lines, striving to to do what we can to, to help businesses, to stay afloat. It's all a matter of putting others before ourselves. How else can we reach outside our walls in this area, in this community? Where are people hurting and and where are the real needs? Take some time to think about how we can do good and meet those real needs. How can we walk with those who are in the depths of suffering and lead them into a time of hope? What are the opportunities to accompany each other in the ways that we are visibly instructive in the world that prefers the separation and everyone for themselves? How can we bear witness to a different kind of life? How do we bear witness to the the communal love that we know as Christians? By putting others before the self. This means that we need to find a, a shared path forward in resurrection life so that even if we descend temporarily into despair or sorrow, or death, that we know that we are together and living in God's love. Like Christ, we will be ascended into a new life that is impactful and bringing others to God. In this way, we can announce a renewal, a revitalization and hope in this season to find ways to to do good, all the good we can, as long as we can, in all the ways that we can. So go, go and in the face of our current opposition, bear witness to our faith. Do all the good you can that others might see in us the love of Christ, that they might come to know God in their lives and be able to live with him forever. Amen. This week, I invite you to consider your next steps of discipleship Will you serve God and your neighbor by protecting each other even while distant? Will you grow in love with the Savior who descended to hell that you might be able to be restored to God? And will you share the good news in that the acts of Christ in the daily actions of love and forgiveness in little ways so that others will know the truth of Christ? Amen.
brothers and sisters, go forth this day. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, for as long as ever you can, that others will know the love of Christ. Come to salvation through him. Be reunited with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.